Hello, everyone, and welcome to my series on the opening, the Sicilian Nidorf. And I think it's a great opening. Uh, there's a lot of rich variations, and uh, it still is being played at top levels today and has been phasing in and out of being the most popular opening in chess. It starts out as follows, e4, c5. So this is the Sicilian defense so far, d6. d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6. So uh, from a logical standpoint, Black's play makes little to no sense. He has done very little in the center, and now he's underdeveloped. But when you look at concrete variations, his position is very solid, at least in the beginning. And uh, he will play for a quick uh, b5, e5, bishop b7, and he's going to get some play. And it's going to have some uh, pressure on the weak e4 point. This b pawn could attack the knight on c3. Uh, so there's a lot of possible moves that white can do here. And I'm gonna, not going to look at all of them in this series, but I will look at some of the most testing. So some of the key moves are uh, bishop g5, bishop e3, and bishop c4. There's other moves as well, uh, such as f4, or g3, or a4. But I don't think any of these really will pose that much of a problem to black. And uh, the last move, which has become much more popular recently and was the subject of my first lecture, is h3. And I might do some look on this in later lectures. So to start out, I would like to look at the bishop c4 variation. Uh, this bishop is well placed currently on its most active diagonal, looking at this weak pawn here. So black will often play e6. The point is he's simply uh, shutting off that bishop, taking better control of the d5 square, getting ready to prepare his, to develop his bishop on e, f8 to e7. And in the meantime, next week he's going to play something like b5. So here there are a few moves for white. Uh, a4 is a little bit offbeat, but it's definitely playable. I'm not going to look too much at that. Uh, there's very little to explore. Not much data so far. Bishop b3 is the old move. And nowadays, more and more people are castling. So bishop b3 is the most common move, even still today, even though castling has definitely become part of a lot of strong players' repertoires. And there's quite a few plans for black here. Uh, the most common one is to play b5 right away and just try to play bishop b7 and put pressure on this b4 pawn. So white will castle, bishop b7, and uh, there's a lot of interesting tries here. I think uh, that bishop b7 is probably a poor move because here black will not be able to play bishop e7 because uh, this is a sack, bishop takes e6, that often works out just fine for white. He will end up taking three pawns for the piece, and black's king will be completely shattered. So I think white's in good shape here. So black can't just go completely, you know, just b5, bishop b7, totally systematic. But uh, one thing that is possible here is uh, bishop e7. And so now uh, bishop e3 has been played, and f4 has been played, and there's a lot of variations here. Uh, one recent game I played went bishop e3, castles, and f4. And it's an interesting position. However, the move that I really want to look at at this point of the game is knight bd7. This is not a very common move, but some very strong players have played it before. Uh, a long time ago, uh, before the time of computers, John Fedorovich won a great number of games with this move, knight bd7. It's very simple. He wants to play his knight to c5. And white's plan is often to play f4, and then depending, he'll play either e5 or f5. So, for example, if white does something like f4 here, knight c5, uh, one key point is that f, the point of f5 is to uh, loosen up this diagonal, the uh, b3 through f7, or I guess uh, a2 through g8, if you want to really call it that by forcing black to play e5 and then bringing the knight back. And now suddenly this bishop here has gotten much better, and this knight on c3 will often jump into d5. There's some long variations in these lines. But after knight c5, f5, uh, black can just ignore it. He can play something like bishop e7. And so white will often try to develop on the king side with queen f3. 
and now black castles. So here is a real parting in the roads for white. Uh, does he want to castle kingside or queenside? So if he castles kingside, his main plan will probably involve f takes e6 and then followed up by knight f5 with the pin on the long diagonal. I played one game recently in this variation. I first like to point out that uh, b5 is a blunder, while uh, e5 doesn't look that great. It's a discovered. It hits the knight with a discovered attack. Uh, black can play bishop b7 and have a good position because this knight is immune because the queen is threatened. However, uh, white can play knight c6 here, forcing the queen to move. Knight takes bishop, queen takes, and now e5. And I fell for this trap once. Uh, if bishop b7, e takes f6, attacks the queen as well, and black's losing. So black will play queen c7 here. And now this is an interesting point of the game. There's, it's kind of hard to see what white's going to do. Black in the future will probably try to, for, to play for b5 and then b4. And he's not going to want to play e5 until he's played b4. So, for example, if white does something like bishop e3, b5, rook ad1, these aren't the best moves for white, but they're kind of generic, like things that you might consider doing. Uh, black will play b4. This knight here has trouble finding a good square, something like this. And then e5 traps this other knight. So that means that this knight actually has to go to b go somewhere else, like b1, and then e5, knight moves. And now this bishop looks nice, but at any point black wants, he can just take it off with the trade it for the knight. In the meantime, black will also play bishop b7, and this e4 pawn is coming under huge pressure. So this is black's plan to play b4 and only then e5. And of course, there's things white can do about it. I mean, first off, white could play something like a4 here if he wanted. But here, I think maybe now we can just play e5, knight to e2, and knight takes b3. Because at this point, uh, white's pawn structure is crippled, and black will be able to just quickly develop bishop d7, bishop c6, and he's not, white's not going to be in that much control of the game. Black's going to have the open c file to work with, and he's going to be able to play against this e4 pawn. However, like I said earlier, the most common way of playing this position is. Uh, f takes e6, f takes e6, and knight f5. So uh, obviously black can't take this knight because of the pin on the king. But uh, one thing that black can do is play knight takes b3. So if white just recaptures, he loses a piece. This isn't going to fly. But uh, the move that white does play is knight takes e7 check. Queen takes e7, and a takes b3. So here we have an interesting position, and it's really hard to tell who's better. So um, there's a few things that could happen. Uh, black can play b5 here, because if knight takes b5, bishop b7. Uh, and I think black's doing all right, because now this knight is threatened, and this pawn is threatened. And if knight c3, uh, knight takes c4 can be played with a discovered attack on the white queen. So after b5, White's most common move is bishop g5, and now bishop b7. And uh, I think that this is an interesting position. I don't think that it's necessarily worse for black. White's going to have some pressure, but black's position should hold together just fine. Um, and I think black can be optimistic about this going into the future. Uh, Another move that's possible is g4. This is a real Rambo man move. It's just com it's going to get to a completely crazy position, and there's a lot of concrete theory on this line that you can just look up in any old opening book. Uh, if memory serves, I think that uh, b5 is the correct move. And then after g5, knight takes e4 and bishop b7, trying to pin. And I think that black's supposed to be okay here, but I haven't looked at this too much recently. G4 is uh, very sharp, of course, and I think that white can really get a good attack going. And in general, I think this is just not the most testing way for white to play. I think if he's going to play f5, uh, he, he should play bishop e3 here. The point is simply to castle a queen side. So 
after queen c7, so he can castle queenside or he can play g4 right away. And uh, it's funny that castling queenside is a huge, almost a game losing blunder, I think, over uh, g4. The point is on g4, b5, oh, excuse me, um, b5, white can play g5 here, and black doesn't have time to play b4. But if white castles, then after b5, white's really in trouble. Because if g4, b4. And if g5, b takes c3, takes f6, takes b2 check, king takes b2, bishop takes f6, uh, white's king is extremely unhappy. Black is totally fine. The open g file is going to be close, very uh, useless for white. Uh, black will be able to play for a5, a4. Uh, he's going to have rooks on the a, a uh, the on the uh, b and c files to play with, and he's got this excellent bishop on f6. I think that black has excellent attacking prospects here. And if white moves the knight, something like uh, I guess knight back to b1, although it's really ugly, uh, we can play e5, and then bishop b7. And this e4 pawn comes under immediate conquest, and white's really hurting. So knight a4 is another possibility. Um, I think here the best for black is, again, e5, and then knight e2. And here, actually, you could take this pawn on e4, but it's kind of risky with things like bishop d5 hanging overhead. For example, something like this, knight takes c5, uh, this rook hangs. Black's probably okay here because he traps the queen, but... There's a lot of things that aren't just aren't worth your trouble trying to figure out. Um, I think the easiest thing to do is just knight takes b3 check, forcing a takes b3, and now bishop b7, threatening this pawn again. And the only thing that white can do to protect it is knight g3, and then black will play rook c8. So at this point, uh, this pawn on c2 is threatened with checkmate, and if white drops his queen back to e2 or something, then knight takes e4 happens. So instead, white will have to play rook d2 and then d5, and I think black is in excellent position because he's made his thematic d5 break. White can't get in g5 in time because if knight takes e4, and white takes this pawn, bishop takes d5, which comes with huge effects, putting this rook in the corner, and black's really in good shape. And lastly, uh, if a3, just trying to stop b4, I think e5 is good because now, after knight d e2, we play knight takes b3, c b3, and b4, hitting this pinned knight. So now after a takes, we play rook b8, and very quickly we'll just play rook takes b4, threatening this pawn on b3, and then bishop b7, and there's going to be a ton of pressure on e4, and white's extremely slow. For example, something like g4, rook takes b4, and white can't play g5 because of knight takes e4, and this knight on c3 is pinned to the king. So that would be unfortunate for white. And black just has a big advantage there. So after castles, bishop e3, queen c7, g4 is definitely the best move. And now b5, um, g5, knight takes e4, knight takes e4. So uh, bishop b7 is possible here. I think this is the best move. And knight takes e4 is a possibility, but I just don't like it very much. I think, for example, um, f6 is pretty nice. And then something like g takes f6, queen takes e4, bishop b7, and queen g4. Or queen h4, sorry. And uh, after bishop takes h1, uh, g takes f6, and white's going to be in good shape because this king is going to be under a lot of peril. So after uh, bishop b7, there's quite a few moves for white. f takes e6 is one possibility, and f6 is another possibility. So if f6, I think bishop takes uh, e4 is the best move, queen f1, and now just bishop takes h1. f takes e7, queen takes e7, queen takes h1. And at this point, uh, white currently has two bishops, but... Black can take one of them off whenever he wants. He's got, he's, got a, he's got a bunch of pawns. He's got a rook and two pawns for those bishops. For example, here I think b5 is a good move. Just letting this bishop really bite on granite. And it's hard to see what white's going to do. For example, something like castles. 
Black will get some play with rook c8. He's got a nice central pawn mass. I think Black's probably doing just fine here. I don't know if Black's better, but definitely has equal chances. And uh, f takes e6 is another interesting move. So bishop takes e4. He takes f7 check. King h8 and queen h3. So now it would be a blunder to take this rook because g6 threatens mate. I'm going to stop this h6 and then your bishop takes h6, uh, white's going to get checkmated. But I think a good move for black is um, knight takes b3. A takes b3 and just rook takes f7. And I think black has every reason to be happy with his position here. So there's a lot of complicated variations. You should definitely go over these, look at some of the key games, maybe with a computer, and really be prepared to play this line. But I think this is an extremely effective way of playing against white strategy. Another strategy I can play is to play e5 here. d takes e5, f takes e5, knight d7, and white just castles. He's ready to give up this pawn on e5 because he thinks after something like bishop e3, he'll play a quick queen h5, uh, rook d1, and black's position is going to be under a lot of pressure and it's going to be hard for him to defend. Um, the alternative here is just to castle, because um, maybe he want, maybe he doesn't want to sacrifice this pawn. He's not, if some players just don't like sacrificing material. And now playing e5. And now there's actually a really interesting line here that goes, uh, oh, sorry, knight takes b3, a takes b3, and bishop c5. So here, white shouldn't take on f6, because after uh, bishop takes d4 check, king h1, bishop takes f6, black's just up a pawn for very little compensation. But after, uh, after bishop c5, white plays bishop e3, knight d5, knight takes d5, queen, t uh, not, definitely not queen d6, <laughs> that'd be a big mistake, but queen takes d5. And now let's say uh, queen g4. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on uh, black in this position. And I think that white's position is definitely playable. For example, something like castles, uh, maybe rook d1, queen d or no, not rook d1, that's probably silly, but maybe queen f4. Just trying to protect this e pawn. And, um, Maybe kick the queen next move with this, play rook d1. And black, it's hard to see what black's really going to do in the meantime. So this is one key variation. Another plan is to just move this knight away, something like knight f3, to be able to take back the bishop here. So it starts at b5. I think maybe just knight f3 is an effective way to play this. Bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, bishop d7, rook d1. White's going to have control of the d file. He's going to have this nice square on a d6. Sorry, not d7, uh, d6 to land his rook. And I think white's got a happy position. But black's doing okay there too. And um, and if this isn't to black's taste, uh, just knight d7 is fine. Uh, queen h5, castles, and bishop f4. And this is a very sharp position, but I think black's chances are okay. Um, example here, I think even knight f6 might be possible. Queen D, uh, forcing the queen, white queen back to d1 to protect this knight because if he takes f6, then we could play queen takes d4 check and follow up with bishop takes f6. So, um, that's another way for black to play. I think black is in general doing very well in these variations. So, one last idea for white is after knight bd7 to play bishop g5. And uh, I think we are out of time for this lecture, but the position after knight bd7, bishop g5 will be the subject for uh, the next lecture. And I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you in for the next one.